So it has been just about six months since I purchased my dream camera, and that is the Red V Raptor. And I've gotten a lot of questions about my experience of having it, and also just a lot of people wondering like, okay, so you bought it, now what? So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking it down kind of what the journey has been like over the last six months. What's good, creative fam? Brandon Washington here, and the Red V Raptor is a production monster. Let's just get that out of the way. I think one of the hardest things, and one of the reasons why I haven't put a lot of videos out about the Raptor is because, yeah, the footage is amazing. It is absolutely amazing to film with, and I love pretty much every shot that I get with this camera, but for $30,000, I mean, you pretty much should, right? Well, if you actually think about it compared to the last red, you know, high-end cinema camera, the Monstro, you're really getting a camera that is half the price, but that actually gives you way more features. And that's actually the reason why I initially picked up the Raptor was because I had actually been trying to figure out how could I justify my buying process of getting a Monstro. And so when the Raptor came out, it was pretty much everything I wanted and then some at half the price. So six months later, this camera has only continued to get better. First of all, since the camera has come out, RED has been on top of it when it comes to updates. It's been hard to even talk about this camera because it feels like every time I'm ready to talk about this camera, RED comes out with another update. And one of the biggest ones that they recently just came out with is now this camera supports ProRes. So a lot of times you probably hear this with the Reds and that is if you want to shoot it in its full frame glory in RAW, you have to shoot at 8K, which means massive file sizes. But now that you can actually record in ProRes, you can still use that full frame of the sensor, but now you're going to be recording in 4K and so you still get the full sensor. It is processed though, so it is ProRes, but the ProRes works out great and if you've ever edited in ProRes, especially if you ever edit like on a Mac in ProRes, editing in ProRes is a breeze for your computer. Another big update that they finally added to the Raptor and it also came over to the Komodo, which I'm also happy about, is now these cameras can do time lapses. So you can also under crank your shutter to get you those nice blurry, nice time lapses. And this is something that I'm really happy about. You know, I like shooting time lapses. I think that they can help to the overall project that you're producing. And so now that I don't have to run to a DSLR or a mirrorless camera in order to capture a time lapse, I can do it right inside of my cinema camera that I'm probably already using on set anyway. This is going to be super, super helpful. Another big update that Red actually just announced yesterday, and yes, I already bought two of them, and that is that now Red has a more high capacity two terabyte CF Express Type B card, and this is huge. For the longest, I've been having to work with three of the 660 gig cards, and these are not the most easy cards to work with, primarily because when shooting in 8K RAW, if you're shooting long form content, these cards fill up fairly quickly. But now having these two terabyte cards, these are going to allow me to film without having to do card swaps quite so regularly. The only downside and sort of upside of these cards is they are rated to not last as long as the 660 gig cards, which is the reason why they're the same price. This is something that I personally can't wait to actually test and check out and see how this is justifiable. But once I do, trust me, I'll let you guys know either over on my Instagram or here on the YouTube community page. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow me over on Instagram. Now, another huge update with this camera that recently came out actually has nothing to do with red, but it has to do with all of the third party accessories. And that is that we are finally starting to get cages for this guy. Now, GDU actually just announced some rig options for this camera, which they're sort of tied in to the whole red ecosystem. So that was nice. But we also got some extra cages coming in from Condor Blue and Tilta. Now, I have not tested any of these yet, and I've actually been shopping all three of these brands 
over the last few weeks. None of these companies have actually reached out or have mentioned anything or sent me anything. So I'm still trying to look just like everyone else to figure out which one would be the right setup for me. But hopefully these will actually start helping add some additional mounting points and some top handles for this camera. This camera actually has a ton of mounting points already on it, but something that I am planning on doing in the future, which is renting this camera out, I would like to send it out with a cage just for that additional protection. Now, a couple weeks ago, I actually went to San Francisco and I actually got a chance to travel with the Red Raptor for the very first time. And I can honestly say that traveling with this camera is a breeze. Now, when traveling with cinema cameras, I always carry them on with me. And for that, I have my Pelican Air, my 1510. And this is a fantastic case for carrying really any type of camera gear. But I was really nervous about going through security with this camera because a lot of times security doesn't know exactly what these cameras are. They don't understand why they're priced, what they're priced. And I can say that I traveled with this camera with absolutely no problems. I only actually had the TSA pull over my bag once and they didn't even check it. They like just looked at it on the x-ray and was like, ah, oh, whatever, go on about your business. The one thing I will say is that I had to travel with a ton of batteries because this thing has only continued to be a giant battery drainer. So I had a ton of micro batteries from Anton Bauer that I traveled with. And so pretty much my case was the camera, two lenses, and just a ton of batteries. I will say, no matter the plane size that you're on, you can get the Pelican Air 510 to fit on there. And I know when you try to fly, they'll tell you that this case does not fit on the plane, even for the small ones. Trust me, it does. And let them know that you have lithium ion batteries and they will just let you go. Like I, that's just like a little pro travel tip. Tell them you have a bunch of batteries. And if you open it up and you show them how many batteries you have, because obviously you can't check batteries, they will leave you alone. Now on a not so exciting note, um, one issue that I have been running into with this camera is audio. Now, RED created a brand new port for this camera, and they do have an adapter that would convert that port to XLR, of which I actually ordered this adapter a few months ago, but I still haven't got it. So if you are interested in getting the Raptor and you are thinking about getting any type of accessories, I would tell you just be ready to be patient. Okay, future Brandon here. It actually came in. So what's really nice is that since I shot this to now while I'm actually editing this, it has come in and so it works really great. It comes with this nice little braided cable. You literally plug that into this XLR adapter and then plug the other end directly into the camera. And as far as I can tell, the preamps sound fantastic, much better than I actually expected coming into a designated cinema camera. Now, I did make a quick video over this on my Instagram, it's like a little reel. So if you wanna know my initial thoughts, definitely go check that out there. But this video is long enough. So I'm gonna get back to finish editing this so you guys can see the rest of it. As far as any major issues that I've had with the camera over the last six months, there really haven't been a lot. Obviously I talked about it in a past video. I did run into some fairly noticeable issues with the memory cards at first. I was running into an issue with as the memory cards started to get more and more full, they would start like just stop recording on their own and they would tell me that there was a memory issue. And I kept having this problem and kept having this problem until a point where I was just like, you know what, I gotta call Red and figure out what's going on. And I called them and they were actually super, super beneficial and super helpful. And in fact, they had just came out with an update that fixed this issue. All right, now, since obviously coming out with my past couple videos, I've gotten quite a bit of questions. And so what I wanted to do now is just go through some of those questions that you guys have been asking about this camera and give you my honest real world answers after using this camera over the last six months. All right, so our first question is, how does the footage playback on the brand new MacBook Pros with the M1 Max chip? So personally, we have found that this footage plays back without any problems. And this is actually a huge relief because Obviously, these brand new chips have a lot of processing power, but there was also a lot of hype brought up as far as like how well these chips would work, especially with ProRes footage. But we shoot raw. So we were a little nervous as far as like how well would it work. And I can honestly say that even shooting in the 8K raw, it works without any issues. Now, we do primarily shoot everything in LQ when it comes to shooting in raw. 
But one of the nice things, as I mentioned earlier with this new update, is not only can this camera shoot ProRes, but it can also shoot ProRes proxies, even when filming in RAW. So if you did need to shoot at some of those higher qualities, whether that's MQ or HQ, you could still also capture proxies simultaneously, which is really nice. Now, the next question that we have on here is, do I plan on renting this camera out? So I do, as I mentioned earlier, my plan is to eventually rent this camera out, but before I wanted to rent it out, I wanted to make sure that I fully understood it. But more importantly, I also wanted to build an entire package for this camera. Like the body alone is great. And I think a lot of, you know, professional film houses and film sets will probably be okay with just renting the body. But a lot of creators are going to need those additional accessories, whether that's a monitor, a cage, top handles, batteries, memory, all of these things. So I wanted to make sure not only did I have all the additional accessories needed in order to make this camera fully functional, but I wanted to make sure that all those accessories worked really well with the system. So when I do rent it out, they get everything they need. On top of that, I also wanted to be able to offer my services as a camera assistant or a camera operator. So that way if somebody is renting this camera but they don't really know how to use it, I can come out on set and assist them through the entire process. Cause the last thing you wanna do is rent a camera of this caliber, get it on set and not know what you're doing. All right, so now how does it compare to the Komodo? Now. Personally, they are two totally different cameras. Now, obviously, the Komodo is a fifth of the price of the Raptor, which is saying a lot because the Komodo is not a cheap camera by itself. So what do you, I really feel like I'm getting for that other four-fifths of the price? Most of it comes in the fact that this camera is full frame and that it can shoot at higher frames per second or higher frame rates. The benefit here being when shooting in 8K, you're not just limited to 24 or 30 frames per second. Whereas with the Komodo, yes, it can shoot at 6K. When it's shooting at 6K, it's not getting all those different frame rate options. So it is a nice addition to have on the Raptor. Now, I will say recently, and actually very recently as of today, I actually just got in the Canon Speed Booster that was originally designed for the C70, but I did borrow one from a friend of mine, Marcus Robinson. If you don't follow him on Instagram, you should definitely check him out. But I did borrow his adapter and I put it on my Komodo and realized how amazing this adapter was. So I ordered one myself, which now has the Komodo basically able to shoot full frame. So I'm really interested to really put those two things to the test and put them side by side. If you guys are interested in seeing a Komodo versus a Raptor video, definitely let me know in the comment section. I do plan on getting some test shots myself anyway, so what the heck, I'll probably make it into a YouTube video and share that as well. The next question is probably one of the hardest ones to answer and is, is it still worth it? And you know, obviously worth is a very relative term, you know, regardless to who, if the camera is worth it to each individual person, that's gonna vary from project to project. For me and what I plan on using this camera for, I can say that I do believe that the camera will be worth it, but I haven't fully used this camera to the capabilities that I plan on using it. You know, for my journey, I plan on really using this camera in a filmmaking scenario. And that is one of the big reasons why I purchased it. Now, yes, sure, it can be used to shoot commercial projects. And yes, some people are probably going to buy this camera and use it to shoot YouTube videos of the highest quality out there. And those same people are probably gonna shoot in 30 frames per second. That's right, I'm talking about you, MKBHD. But I I'm, I'm really think that this camera, for me, to really make it worth it is going to be in the regards of using it for film. Now, I absolutely have business plans as far as how this camera will obviously pay itself back. And a lot of that is already taken place by being able to use it on certain commercial projects, renting it out on other sets and other things that I can do. But personally, as far as making it worth the entire process of buying and using, I think that I will see that worth when I start to use it in films, which is what I'm hoping to do very soon. And the last and final question that I've been asked is, is this my favorite camera? And you know, at first when people ask me that question, I'm like, well, I mean, of course I love the camera. I mean, that's the whole reason why I bought it, but I guess, you know, 
you call it your dream camera and yes it is my dream camera but i think it's important to remember that you know even though yes this is a fantastic camera it's still just a tool in the entire creative process you know, if someone told me I could only have one camera for the rest of my life, the rest of my career, I can only have one camera to film anything and everything, and it didn't matter what that might be, this is the only camera you could use, without me knowing what those things would be, I don't think this would be the camera that I would choose. Although, this still is the camera that every time I film with it, I love the footage. And that's just because the camera is not as versatile, but what it does, it does so well. Some of my favorite shots that I've ever gotten in my entire over 10 year journey in this videography filmmaking journey have come from this camera because the images just look so stellar. So personally, I would say that it might not be like the end all be all camera for every single filmmaker out there. But that being said, it still is a phenomenal camera. And for that price, it definitely should be. But if you are a filmmaker or a videographer out there and you're thinking, if I buy this camera, this is the only camera I'm ever gonna need for the rest of my life, just remember that there are a lot of other great cameras out there that are probably a little bit more versatile that will fit into a lot more different and easier workflows. And that when you get into a camera like this, you're going to have to buy additional accessories, deal with a lot of media, figure out a new hard drive solution because I'm pretty sure you're working with these file sizes are gonna be something new to you. And so just know that there's a lot more that goes into it with getting this camera. And over the last six months, that's probably been the number one thing I've learned is that just when I think I've got this camera dialed in perfectly and I think I've got it all figured out, there's something new that pops up that I have to figure out as well. But all in all, I have enjoyed this camera. I don't plan on getting rid of it anytime soon. In fact, I actually plan on using it even more over the next six months. And of course, I plan on sharing all that content here on the YouTube channel. So if you don't wanna miss any of that content, definitely hit that subscribe button. Also, if you wanna download some of this red footage yourself and test it out on your system and maybe get to editing and color grading it, I created an entire video that walks through that process and I also have downloads to that footage. So you should definitely check that out as well. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.